Alrighty, guys. So as you can see, we are still waiting for the next big move. What is exciting, though, is yesterday we saw a four-hour breakout within the market, uh, and we've seen a successful retest as we stand. Now, the big thing today, especially for an incredible weekend, if we look at this chart over here, which is a total three, guys, this broke out yesterday, we retested beautifully, and I'm seeing a squeeze on the altcoins that's quite big. And I'm seeing the same squeeze happening on Bitcoin as well. So I think over the weekend, we're going to see a massive move. Um, and obviously, we're going to make sure it's not a rejection. But nonetheless, if we get the move we're looking for, I, I'm seeing a nice 20, 30% pump to the upside. And what's very nice is we're seeing weakness in dominance at the moment. So now that Bitcoin is doing what we thought, this is what I spoke about here. I spoke about the breakouts. Here's my exact drawings from yesterday's stream. And I spoke about the retest. And we have another little short-term trend over here that I want to show you guys that's going to indicate the breakout for the weekend. But obviously, what's very exciting is seeing this dominance, guys. Dominance coming down. And this is on the four-hour chart over here. If we lose this support here, we're looking at a strong push down to the early 50%, uh, which will be a massive push within our coins. So as much as we're focusing very much on Bitcoin as it stands, we just need to make sure Bitcoin's okay. That's the big thing. It's holding supports for the weekend. But if we get the dominance pullback, we can already see things like Phantom, things like Doge, things like ICP, which we'll speak about in the show. You can see how strength is starting to move again to our coins. So today we're going to speak about the mega squeeze over the weekend. We have tons of liquidations sitting around $70,000 on Bitcoin. And I'm seeing Seeing a very fast acceleration if we break through that wall. And I think it happens over this weekend. So, guys, it is Friday. Happy Friday to you all. I give you permission to open a beer early in the morning. I give you permission to drink a tequila if you want. It's a good day. Um, let's go. No more wasting time. Let me find the video. Let's go. Yeah, it's that a Sunday? What? It's Friday. What's up, guys? If you're brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you are enjoying the content. Are you bullish right now? I want to know in the chats, pop in the comments. I want to see. Are we bullish or are we bearish? Today, I'm going to give you guys insights on both, right? Uh, we cannot be upset if we do go bearish and obviously come down 20, 30%. Again, it'll be the best entries for the bull market. But we're also at a stage where I know that the, the pullbacks don't last too long. And I think people start to change their minds and they get bearish. And then what happens is it starts to get away from them and they start making mistakes and adding in a little bit later. So I want to make sure that we're not caught behind uh, or our hands in our pockets if the markets make the big move to the upside. So I've obviously shown you guys many times of how long I am at the moment i'm still very long when it comes to my my margins my doge and my phantoms are, are doing incredibly well i got the deep coin trades here i got the doge longs uh guys this is at ninety thousand dollars it was on fifty thousand uh, dollars two three days ago um so that you could see how i'm still preparing for the squeeze uh but we'll speak about both scenarios so let's see where everyone's at are we uh bullish turks are shown the man no Tur you the man bro you're the man. Uh, smash the like button. Very uncertain. This is where TA for me just separates itself from fundamentals. Like I get it. I get fundamentals and I get the sort of understanding of reading the, the market emotionally and things like that. I just kind of, I'm a very simple person. If we break this, I do this. If we break this, I do this. Very simple. That's the only way that I can remove emotions um, over my ego and over my thoughts. The, 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 the charts will always give you something that's, um, you don't want to accept, but it will tell you the truth. And I think that's the big thing that we got to love from TAs. In the uncertain points, just follow the very simple strategies that we're at right now. We do still have RSI sitting at the bottom on the daily. We do have a lot of these things indicating that there's still a very powerful bullish scenario. And uh, as much as we are seeing a few little uncertainty things, you got to still stick to the charts and keep playing the game and keep following the same strategies, just tightening a few bolts, every liquidation wick, every pump, just slightly turning little things in your strategy to just fit what the market's currently doing at the moment. But nonetheless, TA is always going to give you the very simple answer of uh, you know what can happen and what to do if this happens. And that's the biggest thing you need to do in crypto, guys. You just have the planning behind either scenario uh, and surviving it. And, and that's the big thing. So what is happening in the market right now? Right now, they're making you work. They're firstly slowing it down. So by slowing it down, it's going to make you overthink, right? And it's uh, it's getting a little bit boring. And we now know that sideways, and I can just show you an example here on Doge. You know, if you look at the last, you know, couple of hours, sideways is preparation. 
Okay, so the fact that we are trending and everything settling down means that there is something boiling under the hood and we're going to see a big spark at any moment. Uh, and we're going to be prepared for that. Now, we are seeing a bunch of coins making its way to the upside, but we are going to speak about the fake outs. We are going to speak about all the different levels. I just want to see everyone is ready here. Uh, big Shelly on the charts. Okay, okay. XRP, is there still XRP bulls here? Is it going to finally move? I'll maybe go along with you guys. If you could convince me enough and send me a great chart. Um, Sheldon the Wise, uh, I'm neutral, but my portfolio suggests I'm bullish. Okay, cool. It's nice to see everyone sort of uncertain at the point. Okay, what we're doing at the moment is we're literally tracking day by day because we're going to catch the next move and it may sit flat for a few days as we've seen in the last two, three days, but we're going to stay in tune with the market. The important thing about boringness is to stay in the game and stay in tune with the market and keep warm. And this is why I have a bunch of little trades still running and why I'm still taking trades at this point, because you don't want to, you don't want to cool down when the market is cooling down, because what that does is it's going to take your eye off the game. And when the move happens, you're going to end up falling you know, behind or not being able to do that. So right now, it's so important to even keep warm, even by loading a $10 account and just trading in the days at the moment. It's keeping you in focus and it's keeping you to see the patterns. It's keeping you to see the breakouts, to see the volume. It's keeping to remind you of what you need to be seeing when this happens. Um, portfolio is up 300%. I can't complain. Uh, lunch on you, lunch on you. Let, let, let's go for a, a nice lunch. By the way, guys, before I start off with the show here, if any of you in Dubai next month, Token 2049, Banter is there and we're throwing a very big party. It's bull market party vibes. You remember the last one, it's about 21. So uh, I would suggest if you have made great money within crypto, do not miss the big conferences this year. Firstly, the connections you're going to make is insane. Um, and uh, just being in the in the same room with people that are in the same industry is just going to change everything for you. I think the big thing you've got to understand within this market is having some sort of community or having someone that understands your game. Because the moment you step out of the bubble, there's a lot of people that are going to come and talk. And I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of people don't have experience in this, in this market are currently buying Bitcoin and they're currently this. So it's very important to get in with your group. And these things are big. So if you're in Dubai, uh, come and see us. We're going to have a massive party. It's going to be incredible. Okay, let's go through. So the first thing I want to show you guys over here is obviously we've got to remember Bitcoin uh, USDT dominance. So remember, we're on the weekly here, and this is indicating you know, there could be a big correction or this could be a massive explosion of altcoins coming in. And why are we saying this? Because this is the initial trend that comes all the way from 2018. It's a very big trend. Okay. And basically, if we lose this trend, we're going to go to levels we've probably never seen before in crypto. And that's why it's a very, very, very big trend. Now, we are just hovering here. We had a small bounce that happened, but then we had a push up and now it's getting sucked down. So what we do need from this is we do need to break this. Now, if we can break this in the next few days, there's a very fast acceleration point over here. And to be honest, I don't think these supports will hold. I think we'll go into places we haven't seen for a very long time. And this just means people are getting out of dollars and into the actual tokens. So what I did is now that I know that it's such a critical area. So the way it works with charting, guys, is you start on the weekly, right? You start on the weekly, you get a little bit of an understanding of the higher time frame views of what's happening and understand the critical levels of where we are in the high time frame. Then what I do is now I know that this is a very big decision. Decision. And what the decision is, is either there's a 30 or 40% correction within crypto. That means people are going to sell out of tokens back into USDT, or there is the, 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 30, 40% to the upside. And thus, again, if we break this trend, it indicates something for a very high time frame view. If you're breaking a trend that's five years old, um, this is going, you know, this can be the 100K. This can be the, the 200K. Like, we don't know as it starts to break through. So it's very important. Now that I have that and I know the big zone, now I can zoom in and start tracking on the smaller time frames. And this is what you're going to start doing within, uh, within a lot of tokens. And today I want to explain something very important because we got a couple of entries and I got more entries for you guys today at the current levels, but I'm going to show you how we're going to start dipping in at certain areas and where exactly do you add to your positions as we start to make our way up. That's important. That's why I zoom in because by zooming in, I know where we are in the higher time frames. I can start with my positions. And once I'm confirmed or it's a fake out, or so then I can either start smalling or I can start adding to the winners as they start going. So what I like to do at these times, especially if I'm trading or I'm looking to make money on the next move, is I will take three to five coins, right? Maybe even up to eight coins. And the goal is to get a couple of fishing rods into the ocean. That's what you're doing. You're popping a couple. Then what happens is, let's say the market starts to play out now, and you've got a couple of your rods that now catch one or two big fish. The goal now is to reel in the other rods and add to the ones that got the fish. 
Very simple. So it's taking a couple of bets, looking at what's going to be strength, because what we've noticed in the market in the last couple of months is not every single token is running. We're seeing the specific ones that are going. So by taking bets, you're going to then identify which ones are really hot when Bitcoin bounces. And you want to get rid of the ones that are, I wouldn't say wasting your time, but the ones that are sitting flat, you want to cut them so that you're down to two major trades and that's where you're focusing at. And I think this is such a powerful strategy to be using because firstly, it gets you in the game, but secondly, you're not holding on to laggers. You're moving to where the money is and you're making the cash. That's a very big lesson that I'm learning currently. So if I look here on the USDT dominance, I was tracking that this is the big area. And then I went to the four hour and I'm tracking short time frame. And we did lose a little trend that we have retested. So what I want to see here is I think there's a tiny small pullback that's happening now over the next hour, two hours, three hours. But what should happen is a little push up and this should come back down here. Now, obviously, the significance of us losing that level is a mega, mega, mega pump. And that's the squeeze that I've been speaking about. And the squeeze is all coming down to a couple of things of liquidations and just looking at sentiment in general. Like a lot of people are very uncertain. And a lot of people, are, when they get uncertain, they automatically get bearish, which is very weird. It's weird how as soon as you're uncertain, you're bearish. Okay. So I'm starting to see a lot of people not change their thesis, but really starting to prepare for possible bigger moves. Now, Guys, this may put you ahead of the ball by preparing. I, I think preparing is one of the best things to ever do in crypto is be prepared if Bitcoin goes to 40,000. Be prepared if these happens. But I'm not going to get stuck in that vision too. I'm not going to be certain that that's exactly what's going to happen. So a lot of people are starting to become certain about it and start starting to really get. And that for me is more dangerous um, than not being in the market, not getting in at all, especially at these levels. So again, a lot of yellow sitting at the top. And now it's moving down. So I don't know if you guys know what I spoke about yesterday, but yesterday I said 68 to 69,000 is the wall, right? They first held 70. The moment we lost 70, they moved it down. Now, if you look at the liquidation hunts here, and I'm looking at the 24 hours, a little bit shorter time frame. look how they're moving down. So now that they conquered the, the $67,000 zone, the one where we just missed or just basically hit now, now they're moving down which for me, people are shorting this area. They're shorting the top over here, which means a few things. It means there's tons of shorts here. There's tons of stop losses sitting here and there's liquidation pools sitting higher up. And I'll show you guys in the higher time frame of more or less where these liquidations are sitting. Let's just have a look here quickly. There we go. So we got at 69 again. That's where a lot of the pool is. So the big wall for me is not 74,000 anymore. It's this area of 68 to 69. So if you looked on the smaller time frames, there's a squeeze from here to 69. We get through 69, we squeeze very quickly to the areas of, uh, of the, the 76K. Now, this intrigues me because it gives me a little bit of leeway of where to build my positions. And it gives me an understanding of where I need to be in by the time the market explodes. My goal is not to try to get the best entry now. My goal is to try to get my full positions in by the time Bitcoin squeezes. By the time it squeezes, I want to be in. I don't want to be fumbling. I don't want to be trying to find trades, trying to get into coins by the time that basically happens. So now you can see there's not much to the downside, guys. Not much. So the, 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 the bears and the shorters are definitely coming in hot at the moment and they're moving down. Every time Bitcoin makes a lower high, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, which for me, I think is going to get erased very quickly at any moment. And I'm preparing for that as well. Okay. Now we got that. Let's quickly look at fear and greed. Daily checks. I'm going to do this with you guys so you get used to it. It's very important. Uh, we're sitting around 75. So not to, again, this for me means that is this the best time to invest now? It's saying take a little bit of time. Remember, the dollar costing is important, but we're not at extreme greed to, greed to say that we can't go more at the moment. So this, for me, it is a little bit higher. But again, I'm looking at extreme greed at that sort of point, and I'm working off the sentiment of the market. Now we go straight to the charts, and we see what's happening. So Bitcoin, it's important. These lows that it made over here, this was the drawing that I gave you guys. Uh, I spoke about when FOMC happened, the bounce was strong. Um, now we do have a little bit of midterm RSIs that are sitting a little bit high. So if you look here, the four hours sitting a little bit high. So it's indicating this is the retest, right? So what it means is we want to hold this area of 64,000 over the next little pullback that we're seeing. And if this four hour comes down, it says maybe the next, you know, 10, 12 hours, we may see a little bit of red within. But if we hold this trend and we hold 64,000 pretty strongly, I'm seeing the push up again to that area. And you see where we rejected yesterday. This is where the shorters are now moving down to. Now, I want to remind you guys again that I have a plan. My plan here 
is to understand that this is my major trend that I don't want to break back into. So it gives me an understanding that if we start coming anywhere into these zones, just lower your risk and smaller the size of your positions until we are back outside that trend. Okay, so it gives me an idea that the moment we start coming in here, I'll manually start decreasing some sizes, maybe taking a little bit of profits and some, some good trades if that starts to happen. Okay, but my goal here is to buy and add my positions over here in support. If we start to come in, start to protect, start to make sure, okay, maybe this scenario is in play, um, but I'm not afraid to enter at these zones here. And then what I'm seeing is the push up. And when the push up happens here to the 68, 69, we get through that, there's a mega squeeze to 74. And then we do have my target if we break the top. I don't think the wall is strong at 74 anymore. I think this is the strong wall here. Then I'm looking at 80,000. So I think that we might sit here for a little bit longer. Why I'm saying this, and I'm talking a couple of hours, and this is why it's so good to see this over the weekend, is because they're going to kind of want to make short shorters a little bit more I wouldn't say arrogant, but keep shorting, keep shorting, keep shorting, keep shorting. Build it more, build it more, build it more, build up more liquidations, more stop, uh, uh, more stop loss zones, all these sort of things. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does go sideways slightly, but nonetheless, I'm still 60% on the bullish side and 40% on the bearish side, that this is where I'm going to see the bounce and this is where I'm going to see the push up to the upside. The goal here is very simple. The goal here is to get my initial entries. And this is for spot as well, guys. There's a lot of coins as spot. I'm not just talking short-term trades here. I'm talking about, you know, good areas, uh, decent pullbacks, and, you know, the strength and confirmation bias that we're sitting at at the moment. So my goal here is to get entries here and to survive the stop losses. Survive, right? But I don't have to go in my whole positions here. I can enter 20, 30% of what I want. Okay. Once we can confirm the bounce, I'm expecting us to push up here. Then I'm expecting a little bit of sidewaysness. This is where these flags are very powerful, guys. These flags, these wedges, these sort of things. So I'm using this to get my initial positions in. Then I'm expecting to go up and slow down here because that's the big wall, right? That, that's where the big shorting wall is there at the moment. Then that flag is in there. The moment we crack that flag, is where I want to add in the rest of my position and the stop losses will now move to this area and allow to be a part of the squeeze. Then what happens is price will go up and let's say we do slow down at 74. And then we break that flag. That will be another add-on point. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking Bitcoin, but I'm using it as a funnel of when to add to my positions, when to, when to add to my winners. So again, this is where I'd be dipping my toes in a couple altcoins. By the time we get here, I already know what's the strength and which altcoins are performing better than the rest. Therefore, by the time we break this wedge over here, I'll be getting out of the weaker alts and, get, and adding to my stronger alts and starting to reduce my risk. Uh, so yeah, smash the like, guys. So I'm explaining this to you because it all comes down to the planning of what exactly I'm going to do if this starts to play and it plan out. And if I don't have this understanding of what I'm going to do when it plays out, it's going to catch me to fumble when it actually happens. I know exactly if the market does this, I know what to do. I know what to do. Like that, that is the ideal way to always do that. Um, so this is ways of not being afraid to put something in the game now and adding later. And if it decides to go south, you're only losing on your 20 or 30%. And that's the big thing. You're not taking massive losses if we do go down lower. And by the way, going down lower will create way better opportunities for the future, right? For the next push to the upside. Um, we're not promised that right now, though. So that's the plan. Okay, now that I know the plan with Bitcoin, I know the two areas of where I'm going to add to my positions and when I'm going to cut you know, a couple of laggers. Now I got a nice little, uh, when I say, I want to be charted like Sheldon. Uh, no problem, I'll teach you, I'll teach you. We're nearly ready for sniper school, guys. Nearly, 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 nearly. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Hopefully Monday I can open the gates and we can uh, we can pump sniper school. You don't want to miss this one. Not in the bull market, not in the best uh, money season of life. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, uh, obviously what's intriguing me quite a bit, guys, is Bitcoin dominance. Look at this. C couple of red candles forming here. And this is on the on the four hour. So again, what I spoke about here is uh, look, if we lose the support zone here, look at the next one all the way down here. So I'm very interested in that. I'm interested to see that the altcoins are actually getting quite a bit of strength with Bitcoin at the moment. And now that Bitcoin's trending, we are starting to, to, to get some of the rotation happening at the moment. So right now it's pulling down if Bitcoin's going up and it's pulling down if Bitcoin's going down. So we're starting to get that flow. And remember, all we are trying to do with dominance is this thing's been rampaging for months and months and months to, to you know, over a year. We're waiting for the real correction. And that, for me, is the first leg of true alt season. And then there'll be one more later on. 
one more later on and that will be the crazy price discoveries and then we're probably done for a couple of months or a couple of years <laughs> we've seen bear markets before they do take some time okay now that we got that into play let's go into the couple of alts so here we go my eth entries would be around these areas here that's where i'll be starting my position this is where i'd be adding to my position if it's looking strong and that's obviously the area i want to be in by the time the squeeze is over here that's where the squeeze is so you can see eth as well every wall the shorters are moving down they're moving down they're moving down until one day they get caught and that's what creates the squeeze uh, and creates the very fast push to the upside so what i'm predicting here guys is if we do get through that 68 69 i think we're going to move very quickly and that's what creates the urgency for me to get something in the game and to build at these levels because i think it's gonna be a very fast move because the fast moves catch a lot of people off guard um and uh we don't want to be caught off guard in this market. So there's Ethereum there at the moment. Let's look at things like uh, Solana. Just have a look. There we go. Sol is coming straight back to the zone again, guys. This for me is the bounce zone. It's the zones here between the 160, 175 to slightly top up. I wouldn't go full in on Sol. I'd slightly top up uh, on some positions, especially if you go through your portfolio today and you caught the Sol pump, right? But a couple of the other coins have been really crappy. Like I would maybe decrease a little bit of those coins and add a little bit to the salt. Like it's it's time to start drawing the line between your winners and your losses. And it's time to start, you know, making decisions between these things. You don't want to hold a ship that's got holes in it. You know, when you've got a, a nice fast Lamborghini yacht like Conor McGregor right next to it. Like that, that that's a, it's a big thing to understand. And uh, look at things like Doge. They I spoke about the Doge push. Doge is going. So Doge is at the verge here of the squeeze. This one's already getting near the areas uh, of the squeeze to the upside. So you can see there is definitely still strength. Uh, and guys, I'm still holding. You know, I have this. I got a TP strategy with my with my margins here. Uh, this is sitting around seven hundred thirty thousand dollars, which is long in Doge and Phantom at the moment. Uh, I'm holding strong onto these. Uh, I got you know yet such a such a point when you get good entries that you can you can hold through a lot of these things because if doge breaks this area and obviously breaks the highs i could be i could see doge go up to 35 to 40 40 cents you know i know that dominance when it comes down violently which we haven't seen in two years we haven't seen a real dominance collapse like i i know the entries that i got when it comes to that so doge is good it's a little bit late for some entries but we did get it yesterday um dots is still sleeping a little bit so i would possibly load up on a little bit of dots and reason being is uh, i know high time frame where I'm getting dots at. So I just want to show you this over here. That's the main momentum line that dots currently in. And for me, this is good buys, even for spot to be adding in for the push to the upside. So dots also one I'm super interested in. Um, again, 20, 30% of the current entries. Let's see a lot of them that I was speaking about. There's Koti. Guys, I'm not going too many, many, too many coins. Like uh, I'm not going to do so many coins. I'm doing a lot of them here. Why? Because I got rhythm with these tokens at the moment. I got rhythm with where we at at the moment to just add new tokens and stuff. Like we'll add as the market's trending and as it's moving. Right now, I'm getting what is understandable and what's at really good levels. Plus, they strength. koti has been a really strong pusher. Dot's been a strong pusher. Solana's been a strong pusher. Doge has been a strong pusher. We're still trading strength, but I understand these coins, which is really good. So koti again. This is the zone of adding up on some Koti. Things like Link. Link, exactly. There's my drawings. Link's getting to the position of adding. Starting the position, if you don't have any of it yet. Cardano. So for me, guys, I'm looking at the higher low here from a lot of these tokens. And I got the idea of where their squeezes are. So what I want you to do is on any tokens that you're at, you jump into the eight hour or the um, the the four hour, eight hour chart. But what you're doing is you're drawing in your horizontal blocks. This is not hard for all of us to do, right? Go here to Cardano and understand, okay, there's the trend, there's the retest, that's where the squeeze is there. And you basically mark out these horizontals. If you mark out these horizontals, you'll get an understanding of where price will speed up and where you need to make sure you are, you are adding. So if you start to see something like Cardano, where it starts to, from here, you're buying a little bit of the dip, right? You're buying a little dip, and that's, you say, we're going to hold this area over here. You can pop some stops under that zone there. Then what happens is it starts to play out now, it starts to work its way up. The moment we break here, you want to add some to the game. As it gets there and it breaks that one, you want to add some to the game. So I have a full understanding that this is where I'm starting my position, this is where I'm adding, this is where I'm adding more, and this is where I must be fully in. And I have that full understanding of where it is. And the goal is always, we know that high of Cardano of 80 cents is separating us from where we're at now to the $1.20 range. I know that it's worth fishing on this coin here because if I can fill up everything I need here, now I zoom out and I break that high. 
you could see that the next target, and I'll just show you here on Cardano, this is why it's always worth me fishing in these areas. Look how it broke this horizontal here. The next horizontal is at $1.20. So by me fighting in these areas here, he's actually fighting for the move from 80 cents to $1.20. That's where I'm looking to make the money. So the same way that I'm showing you horizontals on the four-hour charts is the same way that I'm showing you on the weekly chart too, to know where's the weekly squeeze. And you can see how big the squeeze is on Cardano when we get through the weekly areas of here. You're looking at a price, and we've seen how it happens. We've seen that the moment you hit a horizontal, right, or you break a horizontal, let me show you an example. There's a horizontal of Sol. The moment it broke 130, now all of a sudden it went to $200. So it's weekly squeezes that you start to see come into play. So thanks for Cardano. It's worth me battling out here. Still one of the early tokens that have not come fully out of the bottom range. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this is called the bear market. The moment you get a pass that point over there, now you're going to bull. And end of the day, this, and this is the way I think on every entry, I know the power of me trying a thousand times in the bull market, but only getting three rights. I know the power of those three. Those three can change everything because if I fish here and later on in the year, we end up going to these levels or we even end up going to all-time highs, look where I caught my entries. Look where I got you know, my, my main zones that I could hold stress-free. I could survive the 20-30% wicks, which is very important. My goal is to get entries here that, that don't get affected by wicks and stuff anymore. Um, that's where it changes the game. Here's uh, AVAX. Guys, I'm seeing four-hour breaker trends. Here's the total three. If we hold here, we're bullish. If we hold here... I'm seeing the push. This is where the squeeze happens over here. And that dominance is giving us those signs. So if I look here at total three, it's the same thing here when it comes to AVAX. AVAX for me, four hour trends. Uh, I know this is the big retest zone. And I know that from here, any moment, I'm looking at $100. So it's a big position that I'm trying to build. Uh, here's the other one from yesterday, Manta coming in. Let's see things like Carver. Carver's also breaking some four-hour trends. Carver, again, guys, just reminding you, spot trade, one of my higher time frame bull market tokens that uh, I think is going to be good in these areas. Uh, I won't be calling this once it's above a dollar. So it's still at those areas of loading up. Uh, I'm still very happy with Carver. Uh, let's go through things like, oh, look at that. The moment you go through a horizontal and Phantom, this is where we push. So this is my thoughts on Phantom at the moment. I think it rallies up to around 1.4 on the next bounce um, over the next couple of days. And then I'm, there might be a small retest and then we go. But my target's now 1.6 to 1 1.8 uh, on Phantom. So I wouldn't be buying here. It's way too expensive. This is many weekly charts. If you see any coins that have multiple weekly green card, just wait, you're a little bit late, okay? Um, wait for early break of ranges or retests or things like that. So Phantom is still looking incredibly strong. One that's waking up today, which is uh, uh, Theta. So there's the Theta wedge. So if you see Bitcoin start to break out, let me just redraw the line here. Uh, I'm expecting Theta to break out. Now, Theta obviously went a lot higher on the last pump. So this thing went up to 3.7. So my next targets that I'm looking at now, and I just want to show you here on Theta, on the weekly, is uh, $4.4. So it's a massive push on, uh, on Theta. So that one's good. I'd wait for the nice little trend break to add. You're a little bit late for investment entries when it comes to Theta. Uh, I want to quickly update on Cas. Ah, I thought it would be in the zone. We got it a few days back, but this thing's uh, still strong. I'm hoping for a retest here. We can add some more to our cast positions. We got a few interesting coins as well. I know ICP was one of them. ICP is becoming a buy now. So here we go. We broke trend. There is the zone of where I want to enter ICP. We've heard a lot of news happening over the last 24 hours, so looking really good. Um, this is the main high, and this is where we squeeze. So I just want to show you here. There we go. So the goal here is to get entries before the squeeze zone. And the, the main goal is to get positions in before the break of those highs. Because if ICP all of a sudden breaks these highs here, 15, uh, you're all of a sudden then looking at 23 and the big one of up to $40. So ICP is definitely you know, gaining interest. And for me, it is one of the most brutally damaged tokens in the bull markets uh, that are now getting at, uh, at decent levels. Guys, in the meanwhile, while I am going through more tokens, give me some of your tokens, please. Uh, Matic, bro, what's happening? Still waiting. So... You know what's exciting, guys? Why is Matic not moving? XRP, Cardano. Guys, these are major alts. Bigger market cap alts. The reason why they're not pumping is we haven't had the dominance come down for a long time properly. When dominance comes down properly, it releases the bigger, larger cap altcoins. That's what we're waiting for. So the fact that it hasn't happened yet still shows you the, the opportunity that you're getting in this narrative of the larger cap coins. Do not doubt, don't think that they're not going to give you insane gains. 
They are. They may not give you 100Xs, but you're going to find solid 3, 5, 10Xs within these tokens. And if you do the strategies with me where you start adding to them and you start building them properly, they can become massive. So you're still early to the narrative of when the do dominance drops, the major coins go. And that's why things like Matic, I'd be grateful that you're still getting at a dollar. I'll be grateful that you're still getting at these areas. I still think Matic's going to absolutely rip. And I just want to show you this over here. Firstly, it made a really good higher high and it's sitting on the trend right now. Just be damn patient. You're catching the perfect time of when you want to get into a token of the start of the bull market is what? The major trend, the first higher high. We've been through this. We've seen how this is the formula. Buy here, be patient. We have not had the real push from major alts just yet. So it's still opportunity. Opportunity for XRP if you like it. To opportunity for, for Cardano. Opportunity for Matic. Uh, opportunity for Ethereum. You know, a lot of these tokens, their leg comes soon. That's the one that we are waiting for. Uh, I want to see things like Arweave. Arweave is about to break this big trend. So I just want to remind you guys, this might be a little top up if the market breaks out today, because Arweave, Arweave is obviously one of the stronger tokens. Um, but here we go. So I just want to show you the two highs here and show you this trend. Very close to a Arweave breakout. So the way I would do it with this is I'd actually wait for it to break out first. I'll wait for a little breakout. I'll wait for a little retest. And that will be my area to, to be adding in. Again, where are we going to accelerate once we get through that high? Then you squeeze to the highs. And if you obviously get through the highs, you know, we're still looking at my next targets of $65 for our week. So now I know I'm fighting in the $35 range. What am I actually fighting for? I'm actually fighting for the push to $65. So I'm using this as a way to start laddering and getting into my positions. But ultimately, I have my higher time frame target that I'm actually looking at. Uh, let's look at things like render. Let's have a look at render. Render's obviously hot. <laughs> this thing is done well. Uh, guys, I don't know what it is, but you got to love like Fibonacci's, right? You know, when I told you guys, take from bottom, uh, from top to bottom, and 1618 will always be your main TP. Will your TP where you take at least your initial capital out. Look how it hit it perfectly and where we're rejecting. So right now, there's no buys here. I, I'd still hold if you want to. I'll take something off the table and start loading up on things a bit cheaper. You've already caught this one. Okay, but what it needs to do now possibly is take a, a breather. Once it has a breather in play, either a retest or a little flag, then there can be a push to 2618. So if you're looking at something to hold this still for a couple of months, I'd be waiting for around $20. That should be the next areas of where we should push to uh, and start to make our way up. So I wouldn't buy it though now. Definitely wouldn't buy it now. Okay, Gala Games. Gaming, 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 gaming. Jeff, I need to do a show with Hustle ASAP. Monday, Tuesday, we need to do a recording and we need to do it. It's just the time differences that we're getting here. Um, okay, so Gala, for me, is going to be one of the most bullish plays when it comes to, to gaming, especially a little bit more of the higher cap sort of views. Uh, I still think it's saying gains though. So if you look at the, the whole picture of what happened with Cardano in the last you know couple of weeks and why it's cooling down slightly was because it was a very, very, very big trend break, right? Plus we went to the major highs over here and we slightly broke it, which means the next time we get there, it's very likely we get through it. Okay, so I love it when we just pop through a wall and we reject because it, it starts to remove that wall, which creates the squeeze. So when you want to look at the opportunities here, I still see Gala as one of your biggest opportunities of where you're buying it at and to make money within the bull market. Why I'm saying that is because it rejected that level, right? Guys, look at the level after that. Look at the weekly. Look after that. Okay, so it starts to get you a little bit of an idea. Now you're like, okay, so what am I actually trying to do here? I'm trying to build the position in this phase before it gets through the weekly squeeze phase because the weekly squeeze phase can take me to 20 cents. We're sitting at 5 cents now. This is a 4x. Right, this is a really good opportunity. Plus, if I look at buying, firstly, you're not buying the top now, you're not buying a resistance, you're buying a breakout weekly and a retest. So, this here is your ultimate zone. So, this would fall under an investment entry or a spot entry for me on, on um, Gala. The goal is to get in here, it's already. 30% cheaper from the previous highs, which is a bonus, which is good. Um, once this gets through there. This goes, guys, this could end up being entries of a, of a four to a six X when it comes to Gala. The gaming run's going to happen again. Uh, and that's why I have things like Cytus and a lot of these tokens that I'm loading up on at the moment, Vulcan Forged, all of these sort of things. Um, they slowed down. They started off the actual altcoin rally in the beginning. Um, it was gaming, it was AI, memes, all these sort of things. So the next gaming leg, I think is going to give memes a run for its money. I do. I think there's going to be gaming projects that are really going to be, it's going to be a fight between the top gainers, this, Bull market is gaming and memes. 
I think gaming is going to give uh, memes a, a big run for its money. So if you enjoy it, I, I think 90% of people have lost their money in memes. But if you enjoyed the power of seeing what they can actually do, gaming is a lot more, it's a little bit the same games, but a little bit more of a safer play. Just obviously look at the projects that, that, that you're focusing on. But gaming for me is the next one uh, to rampage to the upside. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Give me some of your tokens. Someone spoke about Tan. We can quickly have a look at Tan. Uh, let's just get it loaded up here. Guys, there's a few things I want to remind you of. We got Coin W in the house. If you want a Coin W account, guys, go below. One of the best accounts that I'm using. Uh, you know me, I got, I got a bunch. I like splitting my money over many exchanges. And uh, they got an Easter giveaway. Go check out the phases. They got, they're giving away AirPods. They're giving away iPhones and iPads. You got to use my link below in the description, guys. So you'll find everything there. Nice giveaways there. And then we have another one called Blowfun, which is coming to school. So if you sign up for school, I'll definitely use Blowfun. New exchange, very easy like Vibits. And there's a $5,000 sign up bonus that is there uh, that's up for grabs if you're using my link below. Uh, and it's got a third party anti rug which is good. So it means money is being held a third party. It's not like a FTX uh, uh, situation that's happening over there. So I want to remind you guys there, and I want to remind you of DeepCoin as well, that I'm up over $40,000 and I'm going to be giving this away to you guys. So if you're using one of my links uh, of DeepCoin and, you, and you're trading on that, I'm going to be giving away these profits to you guys. I'm trading my ass off to make to hopefully make you guys rich. That's the goal. Uh, that's the big goal. Okay, let's go in. Let's speak about Tan. So Tan's waking up. Boom. There we go. So... Remember what I spoke about uh, render? So what you want to do is you want to take the high to the low and it gives you an idea. So tons, one, six, one, eight is coming up at $5. So I would take something off the table there. Um, the next target will be 7.4. So just use this whenever you've got a coin that's going into all-time highs and you don't have data. Literally just take from where it started, the high to the low, put in your Fibonacci, click on this, and make sure you got the, the three important ones. 1.618. 2.618, 3.618. Then it will give you your levels of when a coin, there's no data now. You don't know. There's no horizontals, no nothing. It gives you an idea of where to ladder out. I'll take the most out at 1.61, probably my initial investment. The rest I would then leave with stop losses to trail up. And I want to remind you about this as well, that the time frame doesn't matter. So you can even use this tool on a four-hour chart. or a, If you want to know where are the levels we can go in the next couple of hours and a coin's breaking highs, you can do it on a four-hour. If you want to know what's going to go in the next five days, an eight-hour. If you want to know the next 10 days, a 12-hour. If you want to look for the next month, a daily. If you want to look for the next three months, weekly. If you want to look for the next year, monthly. That's how you shift through. Same tools, same patterns, same style, same everything. It's literally just different data that you're looking at. Different time frames. That's it. And when you have the right time frames, you just assign a part of your portfolio to the right time frame. That's it. So if you're someone that's got ten thousand dollars now and 80% 80, 80, uh, 80 is investment, you're only trading on weekly charts with that eighty percent, guys. Weekly break trend outs, weekly RSIs at the bottom or at the top. You know, weekly two hundred daily MA breaks. Then if you got fifty percent that's in a trading account, that's on four hour charts now. Same thing. You're looking at trend breaks. You're looking at RSI reset. It's the same thing. The only thing that you're doing is you're assigning certain amounts of money to different um, uh, uses and different uh, time frames on the chart. And you look at the right data. That's it. It's the same pattern, same thing. Every single time you'll see these big plays happen on five-minute charts all the way on weekly charts. So it's important to know that, guys. It keeps it a lot more simpler. Let's speak about XRP. Because if it pumps, I want to be the guy that said, oh, this thing could pump. <laughs> uh let's see xrp 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 it had a little push yesterday guys it's still a buy like it still hasn't pumped there hasn't been an xrp rally and i want to remind you here that firstly this is this has been trending since 2022 right if we look at that so it's on momentum line which is always one of your best places to be adding or building a part of a position plus there's some earlier signs where there's a there's a there's a breakout and a retest so I won't be surprised at any moments that we do see an XRP push to a dollar. Like for me, the signs are there. The signs that there is there. It's had a retest. The only thing you're waiting for is volume. And it's very likely volume comes in once you're above 75 cents. So there is an opportunity there, guys. There is definitely an opportunity. Uh, let's look at things like a super farm, which is good. I'm hoping it's a little bit cheaper. So you can see when coins get expensive, I remove them off my list. I don't know if you've noticed that because the temptation is too much. I'm also weak, guys. I'm weak inside sometimes. I've also got this uh, this very big uh, gambler's mentality. Massive. 
Okay, massive, massive. So I delete them. Like you got to work with it. You got to work with the uh, what you handle with. Okay, uh, super still not cheap enough. I'd want it cheaper. However, for bulls that already have it, you know, it's just cooling down for the next push to the dollar. So uh, it's a bit too expensive now. I want things a little bit earlier. Things that are just coming out of these ranges. That's why I was saying things like Cytus. There's a bunch of tokens uh, that are just breaking the bottom ranges. Those are ones that I'm paying attention to. Have we gotten a short-term bounce on Bitcoin? Let's see. We should bounce here, guys, at any moment. We should bounce. And hopefully dominance collapses from this area here too. Uh, I'm actually in a little AVAX long. I hope my AVAX long uh, prints. Uh, guys, Chainlink. I still think Chainlink's spot buys. Spot buys and, and bull market buys. Just accumulate. As cheap as you can get it, like, just go, 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 go. That, that, that's one that I think is still going to do uh, incredibly well. Uh, let's go through a few others. I'm not going through KK. What's, what's KK? KK. I don't know what that is. Uh, Ape about to Ape. Hoping for. I know Ape is one of those that's taking its time. But you're going to blink one day and it's done like 200%. It, it, it definitely gives me those vibes uh, when it comes to Ape. Yeah, breakout, retest. This is the area on the weekly lows. It only starts moving once it gets past 2.7. Then you're looking at $5. So this is still in the, the building your position phase. Uh, it broke its first weekly high. Now it's on the retest. So this would be a spot and bull market entry, not a short-term entry. So you got you to gotta separate the difference. What's good to trade for the day versus what's good to buy for the next six months. You got to have the two differences. Something that's weekly retest like this gives me an idea that I can buy this for the bull markets. Um, some coins that are already breaking out range, gives me an idea that I can make money with you today. And that, that's the big difference between um, a bunch of these uh, different tokens. Filecoin. Remember, I've been speaking Filecoin for a long time. Uh, it has retested. Yes, yes. I do think there's a $30 Filecoin in the future, maybe even higher. This thing has obviously been to $260 before. It's at $9 now. So I see at least this rampaging back to $28, if not $44 over there. So yes, Filecoin is still a, a good one. So is DYDX. Guys, there's still very good opportunities on the weeklies over here. So, so don't ignore you know, what's investment entries at the moment. And uh Let's just see anything else. T fuel. I'm also seeing T fuel. T fuel, guys. T fuel. T fuel. Uh, I'll split it between Theta and T fuel uh, over there. Let's see a couple more. I know Craig's, uh, not Craig, uh, Rand spoke about see, Ronaldo coin. Uh, <laughs> I just call it that. Uh, yeah, so he saw cup and handles retesting now. I'd be patient. Me personally, I'm not buying this. Um, I know a lot of people are in, but uh, you want to definitely be in by the high breaks, which is $2. Then you're looking at dollars. Remember the, the Fibonacci levels. There they give you where this token can go next. Um, APT, Aptos. Still one that I think is going to have a mega strong bull market. Um, and one that's still not too expensive. So there we go. Finally, it broke through the range of 618. Now my next target's 1618. So my target's $30, $30 on Aptos. So Aptos is still one of the, the, the really good ones. Um, I'm doing a meme show soon. I see there's a lot of memes here. Let me wrap my head around me. I, I don't like memes very much at the moment, um, but uh, I'll work on that and uh, I'll bring you guys one meme coin show this bull market, one. One of them, um, I don't know, I've changed. I've matured in the game. I know the, I fell for the NFT craze last bull markets and Gave back a lot of cash. I'll go again. It's in a, a spot and uh, entry zones at the moment over here. So I'll go. You just buy and be patient at these levels anyway through. Uh, 200 likes to go to 1,000. Hit the like button, guys. Okay, so I'm calling up within the market. Um, you got the trend. I want to show you guys the trend again. Very important trend to focus on uh, on the four hours. So what am I expecting? I'm expecting maybe a little bit more downside now, a little bit. Uh, I'm expecting to hold around about the 64,500 is my hold zone. Um, and, and my goal is to be in positions. Right now, you're just charting Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin's in buy zones. You're buying the alts that are, are, are repeating the same sort of patterns. Uh, and the goal is to add and make sure that I'm in by the time we break 70. If we break 70, it's very likely we break 74. And we could see a 30% pump at any single moment. So again, these entries for me are preparing for the dominance fall, which is very near collapsing over here. Um, it's got a small bounce now, which indicates small pullback. And then on the bounce to the downside. So guys, have a fantastic weekend. Love you all. And I'll see you guys all on Monday. It's my daughter's birthday party this weekend. So I won't be doing any weekend streams. I'd love to, but I'm chilling this weekend. Have a great weekend. Make lots of money. Much love. Uh, I need to push it out. I don't have Craig. I don't have Craig. Let, let, let me end the...